It is my privilege to welcome you all to our Freedom Memorial. Let's begin by asking all of our veterans in the audience to please stand and be recognized. I would also like to have the family members of all of our veterans here today to stand and be recognized as well. As family members, you give up precious time with your sons, daughters, mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, and others, all while you're proud and you bear the days and evenings of worrying and concern for your loved ones. Thank you, family members and veterans, to all of you for your service and the service of your family members. Thank you once again. You may be seated. Today, we reflect upon the choices we have, the ability to participate in lo local government, the privilege for voting for things we believe in, even the time we enjoy with our family and friends, and the peace in which we are able to sleep at night. These comforts that we often take for granted have come at a steep cost for so many. And today, we come together as a community to honor and remember our fallen heroes for their sacrifices that they and their loved ones have made on our behalf. Let me begin by extending our appreciation to the American Legion Post 359, the Sons of the American Legion and the Ladies Auxiliary for their ongoing assistance and support for today's event. I'd like to make, take this time to introduce my colleagues both Vice Mayor Margarita Rios and Council Member Luigi Vernola are ill and could not be here with us today, but they truly send their appreciation and their, their thoughts of thanks to you all. I'd also like to introduce Council Members Tony Ayala and Mr. Leonard Shyrock. <laughs> also with us this morning is our City Manager, Mr. Jesus Gomez. We also have some very special guests with us today. I'd like to ask Ms. Norma Amesqua and Ms. Dora Sandoval, both school district members at Little Lake and Norwalk La Mirada to please stand and be recognized. And Ms. Leticia Mendoza, thank you. We also have Mr. S uh, Senator, Mr. Tony Mendoza with us today. Everybody. Thank you, Tony. And, and Assembly Ma Majority Leader Ian Calderon. Ian, thank you. I'd also like to introduce our former mayors, Mr. Marcel Rodarte, Marcel, and Mr. Bob Arthur. Thank you both for continuing to come and, and be with us today. At this time, I'd like to ask everyone to stand for presentation of colors by the American Legion and the Public Safety Cadet Combined Color Guard. Now we will have the invocation given by Bradley Scoop, Sons of the American Legion. Please remain standing for the POW and MIA ceremony following. Please uncover and join me in a prayer. 
Lord, we thank you for all the men and women we call vets. Please be with those who are ill and those who are still in the hospitals. Be with those who are considered prisoners of war and those who are missing in action. And we give to you the spirits of the ones who have gave the ultimate sacrifice. We ask this in your name, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Wayne Kerrigan, past commander of the American Legion Post 359, who will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by the national anthem performed by the Norwalk All City Band. You all, all please, please follow me in the American Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's give another round of applause to our All City Band under, under the direction of Mr. Frank Kinosa. Thank you, Frank. Please be seated, everyone. As I stand here this morning, I can't help but recall 
the feeling I had last year on a morning much like this, right here at this very location. The City Council and I had the distinct honor of unveiling this remarkable memorial. After the art installation and introducing of the Freedom Memorial and its artists to our entire community, these five 11 foot tall etched granite monuments were created to convey the stories of selflessness individuals in every branch of our military services so that people of all ages could learn what it means to be an American citizen, to understand the pride and the bravery of the men and women who serve as our protectors, our champions, never once asking for even the smallest amount of favors in return. Heroes who risk and sometimes lose their lives so that we and the rest of us could do all we can and all the things that we love. It truly is humbling and a little overwhelming to think of the grace and the courage soldiers must have to take a stand for us with everything at risk. Please take some time today, walk around the memorials, truly look at them once again if you've seen them before. And just remember the families as you're reading their stories. But not just today, remember them every day. Their memory lives on in the happy faces of children playing in the parks and the eyes of young or even older Americans and couples enjoying a first date and somewhere very special. And here today in your faces, as we spend time as a community joined in tribute we owe them all so much. Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a moment of silence to honor and remember those that have given their life for our country. Thank you. Now, I would like to invite Mr. Ian Calderon to share a few words. Ian? There is no better national anthem than the Star Spangled Banner. I get the chills every time I hear it. You know, I was uh, watching TV the other day and there was a comedian you know, doing what comedians do, trying to be funny. And one of the jokes that they were making was, why do they play the national anthem before any major sporting event? Because it doesn't fire anybody up. And I just couldn't disagree more. Because I get a pit, I get this, this, this burning in this pit of my stomach every time I hear the national anthem that fires me up, that motivates me, that makes me want to get up and go and do something to make not just my life better, not just my family's lives better, but my community's lives better, everybody's lives better around me. You know, that fire in your stomach that reminds you and lets you know you're an American, and that's what being an American is all about, because there is nothing too difficult and no challenge too great for us to accomplish and to overcome. And that's what I really feel this day, Memorial Day, is all about. It means a lot of different things to different people. But I think the two most important things is remembering that sacrifice and everything that they fought for and reflecting. As I get older, which I am, may not look like it, but as I get older, um, I reflect a lot more on my own life. I have a daughter who's about to turn one years old in a couple days. And I, I think a lot about my impact that I'm not just having on myself, but on her life. And what am I doing to make her life better and the lives better of the people around me? That Not just that I care about, but that live in the community that I live in that depend on me being engaged and being involved because they need help and they need somebody to care about them too. And when I take, think about Memorial Day, I think about those that gave the ultimate sacrifice, those that died in battle, those that have served and are our veterans, those that continue to serve today. How would they assess us today and what we're doing? and how we're treating each other and how we're reacting in this new world that we're dealing with. We are arguably in the most politically divisive times, at least in recent times, 
that we have ever been in. And it's really easy to listen to other people that have a different perspective and different point of view and dismiss them because they disagree or because you disagree with them. But being an American is about disagreeing, but doing it respectfully and doing it in a way that validates somebody else's opinions in their life and the experiences that they've had because somebody has given the ultimate sacrifice for you to be able to have that opinion, for you to be able to express that opinion, for you to be able to have the freedoms that you have living in the greatest state in the greatest country in the world. And it, we have to never forget that. And that's what Memorial Day is all, all about, is never, never forgetting that sacrifice and always reflecting upon ourselves and how we're not just making our own lives better, but the lives better of the people around us, whether we know them or we do not. So I really want to thank the city council, all the city staff that made this event possible today. And I want to thank all of you for taking the time to be here today because it's really important that we remember, we listen, and we reflect. Thank you so much. The American Legion Post 359 supporters and they continue to support our local veterans and their families and help make our ceremonies possible. I'm gonna ask the president of the Ladies Auxiliary, Becky Bullard, to introduce Post 359 and their service groups. Becky? Ladies and gentlemen, and honored veterans, before we do this, before I do the introductions, I would like to have Melissa and William Breakoff come up and do the POW MIA table. It is time that we take a moment to remember those that may still be missing in action and unaccounted for. Good morning. Those who have served and those currently serving in the United States as members of uniform services as civil servants and as contractors are ever mindful that the sweetness of enduring peace has always been tainted by bitterness of personal sacrifice. We are compelled to never forget that while it we enjoy our daily pleasures. There are others who have endured and may be still enduring the agonies of pain, deprivation, and internment. Let us take a moment to recognize our POWs and MIAs. By the way, POW stands for prisoners of war and MIA stands for missing in action. We call your attention to this small table which occupies a place of dignity and honor. It is set for one, symbolizing the fact that some are missing from our ranks. They are referred to as POWs and MIAs. We call them comrades. They are unable to be with their loved ones and families today. So we join together to pay our humble tribute to them and bear witness to their continued absence. This table set for one is small, symbolizing the frailty of one prisoner alone against his or her suppressors. The tablecloth is white, symbolic of purity and their intentions to respond to their country's call of, to arms. The single red rose in a vase signifies the blood that many have shed in the sacrifice to ensure that the freedom of our beloved United States of America. This rose also reminds us of the family and friends of our missing comrades who keep the faith while awaiting their return. The yellow ribbon on the vase represents the yellow ribbons worn on the lapels of thousands who demand the unyielding determination a proper accounting of our comrades who are not among us today. A slice of lemon on the plate reminds us of their bitter fate. 
The salt sprinkled on the plate reminds us of the countless fallen tears of families as they wait. The glass inverted, they cannot toast with us at this time. The chair is empty, they are not here. The candle is reminiscent of the light of hope which lives in our hearts to illuminate their way home, away from the captors to open arms of grateful nation. Let us pray to our supreme commander that all our comrades will soon be back in our ranks. Let us remember and never forget their sacrifices. May God forever watch over them and protect them and their families. Thank you. All these tall people. <laughs> when you're built like a Tootsie Roll midgey. Good morning, ladies, gentlemen, and honored guests. First of all, I want to tell you, thank you for your service to this country and many of you who are continuing service through the law enforcements, fire departments, as well as first responders to the communities. And thank you to your families for supporting you through your service and continued service to us. Without you, there would be no freedoms. Without you, there would be no country. A great man, President Henry Truman, once said, our debt to the heroic men and valiant women in the service of our country can, only, can never be repaid. They have earned our undying gratitude. America will never forget their sacrifices. I would like to introduce today the Combined Color Guard. The American Legion is Melissa Romo Broikoff, which is the captain. William Broikoff, which is Legionnaire. He is also, was carrying the banner today. For the Auxiliary, Francis Powell, who is the captain of the Auxiliary Color Guard. Crystal Romo Reyes. Uh, Dolores Scoop, I know she's out in the audience. And I don't know whether Angelina Chavez is here or not. If she is, she's a longtime member of the Color Guard, as, a, as am I. Sons of the American Legion, Jerry Evans. And today we are very privileged to have two very beautiful juniors, Desiree Alvarado and Brianna Manley. Our list of officers today is Legion Pass Commander Wayne Kerrigan, Sons of the American Legion Commander Bradley Scoop, and I am the Auxiliary President Becky Bullard. Could all the members of the American Legion and VFW, as well as the Auxiliary members, please stand. These ladies, ladies and gentlemen are honored to work with the veterans and their families in the communities and then the Long Beach VA, along with their children in the schools, providing scholarships and leadership learning through Boys and Girls State. You may sit. In closing, I leave you with this from John F. Kennedy. As we express our gratitude, we must never forget the highest appreciation is not to utter the words, but to live by them. Thank you. Before our keynote address, the All City Band will now perform the service medley as we recognize all branches of the armed services. Veterans, please stand nice and proud when you hear your official song. Frank?
Thank you very much to everyone and all of our students from the All City Band. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Today, I have the distinct honor of introducing a woman who has made it her mission to support the veteran community in Los Angeles County. After 20 years of service, Stephanie Stone retired from the U.S. Navy. She was the first woman to serve as the chair to the Los Angeles Mayor's Military and Veterans Affairs Committee. Ms. Stone went on to serve as a commissioner on the Los Angeles County Veterans Advisory Commission and was elected to be the first female to hold its chairmanship. Currently, the Deputy Director of the County of Los Angeles' Department of Military and Veterans Affairs, Ms. Stone is committed to ensuring that our veterans have access to benefits that they so rightly deserve, as well as all the resources they need. It is my honor to give a huge and warm Norwalk welcome to Ms. Stephanie Stone. Good morning, everyone. Honored guests, Madam Mayor. Like many of you, I come from a military family. As an example, my grandmother had four brothers. When World War II broke out, the two oldest immediately enlisted in the U.S. Army and were shipped out to the South Pacific. This left Tony, who was 16, and Nicholas, who was 13, who were told they were too young to fight and much too young to enlist. But that didn't stop my great uncle Tony. He went to the army recruiter hoping he'd get in. It was World War, so he assumed that he might. When he was turned away, he went to the Navy recruiter. Again, he was turned away. Finally, he found his way to the Merchant Marines, and that was his way to serve with, along with his brothers. For those who don't know, the Merchant Marines are civilian sailors who during World War II were used as ancillary support for the U.S. Navy. Great Uncle Tony found his way on board the SS Lewis L. Deitch. On January 4, 1945, while south of Minden Mindoro, Japanese kamikaze crashed into the U.S. freighter Deitch, carrying bombs and fuses. The Deitch disintegrated, killing all hands. The explosion was so heavy that the debris from the exploding freighter damaged a nearby oiler and mine layer. My na excuse me, the names of the crews of the USS, or excuse me, of the SS Deich are etched on the wall of the Merchant Marine Memorial located in San Pedro, California. On that day, my family and those of the other crew members of the SS Deich became Gold Star families. Gold Star families are immediate relatives of members of the U.S. Armed Forces who have been killed in combat or in support of a war. Today, this definition includes those military members who return only to take their own lives through suicide. Ladies and gentlemen, today is Memorial Day. And even today, we will lose 20 
20 veterans who will take their own lives. And there will be 20 new Gold Star families. Today is Memorial Day, the day that we set aside to remember those who lost their lives due to wars and remember their families. May I ask all families of fallen soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, Coasties and Merchant Marines to please stand and be recognized. Finally, I'd like to take one more, well, thank you so much. Finally, I'd like to take another moment to remember those who returned without any fanfare or recognition some 50 years ago. President Obama recognized the 50th anniversary of the Vietnam War by commemorating a pen, a commission in a pen, and has asked for communities to take the opportunity such as this to recognize any living United States veterans who served on active duty in the U.S. Armed Forces at a time during the period of November 1st, 1955 to May 15th, 1975, regardless of the location. And with this, we'd like to give a small but lasting memento of our nation's thanks. So may I ask Mr. Arturo Sanchez, Jr. to please stand and present yourself at the podium. We recognize Arturo, but I would like to also ask all the other Vietnam veterans, I see a number of you out in the, out in the audience, please stand to be recognized. And with that, I'd like to say welcome home, gentlemen. Welcome home. Art. I've known you for many, many years, and you truly are an example to follow as a veteran, as a community service member, and as a friend. Thank you. Now, I'll ask Wayne Kerrigan, who will be joined by Mr. Andron, back to the podium for Post Everlasting. Wayne? Okay, I'd like to honor some of the members of our post that passed away this year. I hope this is a complete list. I know some, most of the time I forget one or two. Okay, first off we have Donald J. Anderson. No response. John W. Doolittle. No response. James O. Epperly. No response. Larry Fior. No response. Jose L. Garcia. No response. McGill B. Lazarin. No response. Frank Napolitano. No response. William E. Wells. No response. Paul Weimers. No response. Could we have just a moment of silence and I'll do a short prayer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who has dominion over life and death, grant us the grace to remember with love and reverence our valiant and honored departed comrades. Grant peace and eternal rest to those who have gone on before us, and make us ready for that final hour. Strengthen and console those in sorrow, and bestow upon us thy everlasting blessing. Amen.
Thank you. We will now have the placing of the wreath by the American Legion officers. Please stand as we welcome Bradley for our closing prayer. Please uncover and join me in a prayer. Lord, we thank you for this special day. Be with us as we go our separate ways and keep us remindful of all those who have given the ultimate sacrifice for the things that we enjoy and for our freedom. Amen. Before we depart, I just want to once again remind everybody, when you're with your families today, enjoying your time, your barbecues, this beautiful weather that we have, remember what we're celebrating. Today truly is a day that we will never ever forget. <laughs>